Welcome. This video is going to be an introduction, uh, basically showing you uh, the steps that you should take whenever you uh, purchase a new plugin from our website. It's going to kind of be uh, general. Uh, we're going to just use a random plugin. I, I chose the Mobflix plugin for this demonstration uh, because it has a variety of different uh, features and events. So uh, we're going to show you basically what we recommend you do whenever you get a new plugin. So what we have here is just an empty Unity project. And uh, first thing we're going to do, uh, we're going to assume you've downloaded the plugin already. So you'll want to import the package, and you just go to Import Custom Package. And we're just going to go ahead and import this. And you see the standard Unity pop-up comes in here. So we're going to import everything. And you're going to do some compilation, and that's all good and well. So right now we're on a PC and Mac standalone uh, build, but this is uh, an iOS plugin. So we're going to jump in here, and we're just going to change the platform over to iOS. And uh, the last thing we want to do is um, now every one of the plugins is, is going to have the exact same structure. So you're going to see a plugins folder. And then in that plugins folder, each plugin will have its own folder. So in this case, we imported the Mobflex plugin. So then each plugin comes with the requisite files, which are going to be directly in this folder, and a test support folder. Now, the test support folder is uh, what you're going to want to use just when you're playing around and you just get the plug-in to give it a look. You can delete this once you're ready to actually release your app. So once you've integrated the plug-in, you're clear to delete this folder. It has no purpose besides demonstrating it. So what I'm going to do is just uh, grab the demo scene. And again, every, every one of our plugins will come with the demo scene. And it's all going to be the exact same naming conventions. So in this test support folder, if there's events, you'll always see an event listener. There's always going to be a GUI manager and this is just going to, it's a really simple script just showing GUI buttons, demonstrating what the plugin offers, like all the different features. And the idea behind it is that you can just add this scene and run it right on your phone or your uh, iPad or Android device and you can test things instantly without having to think. So I'm going to open this up and just have a quick look at it. So uh, what we have here is uh, some basic stuff here. Now sometimes there's going to be an initialize method that will expect you to fill in your information. In this case, it would be a mob clicks ID. Uh, as it turns out, uh, insert your application key is actually a valid mob clicks ID that you can use for testing. So uh, you can actually just, in, in this particular case, leave it as is. But if this were um, you know, Facebook, for example, you might need to input your Facebook app ID. If it's Twitter, you might need to input your Twitter information. But it'll, it'll always be the first, the first button will always be the one that contains the initialize method if the plugin contains it. And you can see this scene's really simple. It just consists of some buttons and they call out to the various uh, methods that the plugin offers. So we tried to make this as simple as possible so you can use this as a base, figure out what functionality you want, and then uh, just run with it from there. So once we have this set up, we are clear to build. So I'm just going to dump this into an Xcode folder here. This is going to build the project. It's going to actually run a post-process script. And uh, if you are on the uh, latest version of OSX, you'll see a little pop-up here letting you know that it completed. If you're on an older version of OSX, then uh, that will either use Growl if you have it installed and show a prompt, or if you don't have that, it'll just show a Finder pop-up. So it'll let you know that the post-process process script did run. And what that means is that it modified your Xcode project, set up all the dependencies, uh, you basically did everything you need to do in Xcode for you. So once we have this uh, set up and ready to go, I'm just gonna grab the Finder window in here. So in here we have the Xcode project, and we're gonna open it up. All right. So once Xcode opens, uh, it'll always be set to simulator. So we're gonna switch that over to an actual device, and Let's go ahead and run it. Okay, so that's going to launch on your device like normal. 
I am just going to set up mirroring here so you can see this running on my device. Okay, so what I'm also going to do is I'm going to open up the Xcode lock. So if you don't know where it is, uh, this button right here hides and shows the log. And uh, Unity dumps a bunch of information in here, so what I like to do is just clear that initially. So now we have the log open, and we have the demo scene running on our device, you can see here. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start clicking buttons. So the first thing I'll do is I'll click an initialize button. And, okay, so that's, that's uh, when there's an initialize or an init method, you're always going to want to call that app launch, or basically you're going to want to call that before you call anything else. And again, we use the same naming conventions for all of our plugins, to, so that once you know how to use one, you know how to use them all. Okay, so once you've clicked initialize, we can go ahead and start playing with the other buttons. So the first thing I'll do is I'll click the 320 by 50 banner, the button in the top right hand corner. And this is going to do exactly what you'd expect. It'll make a 320 by 50 banner and place it on the bottom right. So you can see it right here. So uh, what's also of interest here is you'll notice that you'll start seeing some logs in here. And what these logs are is, is any events that the plugin offers, the demo scene will log every single one of these events. So now you know that AdView did receive add event fired. And that's a really handy way to play with it. So now we'll play with some more buttons on here. So you can see we can push the hide banner button and it hides it. Show banner, we'll show the banner. We can uh, request a full screen ad. So I'm going to push request full screen ad. And you'll notice over here we have an event. OK, full screen ad view controller did finish load event. So that's a, that means that our banner successfully loaded the full screen banner. So we can go ahead and show it. But first, I'll, I'll demonstrate the is full screen ad loaded button. So we push this, except I pushed the wrong button there. So disregard that. So push the is full screen ad ready and it says true because we know that it loaded because we got this event momentarily just a moment before. So let's go ahead and show that full screen ad. So I'll push the display full screen ad button. And sure enough, there's our full screen ad. We can touch the X and dismiss it. So there's a, and we see we have some more events down here. We have the full screen ad controller did dismiss ad event. So that's just letting you know that the ad is gone. Uh, we have another event that just fired here, and that's uh, letting us know the ad view received an event. So we have a, another ad was loaded here. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, push the 320 by 250 top button here. And what that's going to do is load a 320 by 250 ad and dock it to the top of the screen. So that uh, there's one last button here we didn't press. So we have the load and show full screen button. So I'm going to push that. And sure enough, we have a, a full screen ad. And when I dismiss it, the full screen ad view controller did dismiss ad event is fired. So it's just a recommended way to, to play with the plugin when you first get it. Just open up the demo scene, jump in there, and just start pushing buttons and see what it does. And you'll see, you know, watch these logs, and you'll get to learn how the plugin actually functions. So let's just have a quick look at this scene again here. So when we uh, when we look at this scene, and again, these are all going to be structured exactly the same. There's a, a prefab here. You can see it's a prefab because it's blue. And whenever there's a, a manager required, and you see plugin name manager, so in this case, mod clicks manager, that just means that uh, that particular prefab should be stuck in your initial loading screen. It's something that needs to be, uh, you know, in order for native code to communicate with the, your Unity app, this script has to exist. And it's there will always be set to don't destroy on load. And you'll notice the game object name is always set to the class name. So something you're not going to want to change. If you do, native code won't be able to communicate with this. So it's, it's important that you just drop this in your, your initial loading scene and then forget about it. It'll take care of itself from there. And the last little thing in here is in the test support folder, you can see the mob clicks event listener. So this script is just, uh, it's, it's basically the one that was printing all those logs we saw. And it's just showing you an example of listening to each of the events the ModClicks Manager offers. 
So in on enable, it just listens to all the events. And in on disable, it removes all the event listeners. And that's just showing best practices so that uh, if, you, if you add an event listener, you should always remove it. That's what the minus equal operator does. And the plus equal adds it, and the minus equal removes it. So if you follow this convention, doing it in on enable, on disable, you'll always be certain that your event listeners are properly added and removed. And then these are just really simply dumping all the logs into the, you know, dumping all these into the console so that you can play around with it. And that's really all there is to it. You know, anytime you get a new plugin, if you just do the process we just went through, you'll be able to, uh, to see everything that it can do, see all the events, and have a good idea of how it functions. All right, thanks for watching.